Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for approval. Thank you, Supervisor Testruti. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Are there any questions or discussion? Seeing none, please, Cheryl, put us in voting mode. You may now vote. Whoops. That motion is approved unanimously as well. That's a technical term, whoops. So, in case anybody was wondering. Okay, consideration appointments by the county administrator. The Airport Advisory Committee, three reappointments, Tom Trester, Stephen Brower, or Bauer, I'm sorry, Daniel Dominguez. Supervisor Glavin. Super, uh, motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, Cheryl, put us in voting mode. You may now vote. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. There are none. Public addresses. There are none. Letters, communications, and announcements. I have three resolutions from Jackson, Racine, and Washera County Boards of Supervisors urging the state to increase access to and pay for public defenders. Uh, we'll receive this for information as we've seen this numerous times and have already dealt with it, so. That's all that I have. Thank you, John. County Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. immediately the county board in addition to providing staff support to write the grant the county board also provided a grant for dental equipment so we helped get them started fast forward to 2018 and this year to date the facility has served over 12,000 people in our community and it's dental as well as mental health uh, it's really a uh, a continuum of care there and it's it's tremendous so I want to thank Supervisor Brian Hoffman and all the members of the Health and Human Services Committee for a really a nice morning 
and a wonderful presentation. If you haven't been to the Community Health Center, if you haven't been to Lakeshore, it's on Saman Avenue, and I strongly encourage you to check it out. It's for everyone in Sheboygan County, and it's a wonderful place. The budget development process is going well. Chairman Bill Gehring, Finance Committee Chair, all the members of the Finance Committee are doing the heavy lifting right now, and I want to compliment Bill and Chairman Wagner and Vice Chairman Koch for their role in development of the budget. We have a well-oiled process here. In fact, it's gotten some accolades now statewide. Chairman Wagner and I were asked to present at the WCA conference next week. And I certainly don't see it as rocket science, but we have a track record of success. And when I say we, that is the secret to our success, collaboration. We have a track record of success. Goals, targets, establishing clear expectations. I think you're the only county in the state, I don't know, but I think you're the only county in the state that has an annual county board leadership forum where, where we drill into, into our fiscal budget performance, track record, outlook and it's really been helpful as we kick off the budget process each year. So my compliments to you and for those of you who are attending the WCA conference, don't feel like you need to uh, go to the breakout session that Tom and I'll be providing because you know all about it, but uh, we will be there presenting our, our budget process, our program evaluation prioritization process, touching on the operational <coughs> reviews we have done, and frankly, talking about the good work of our department heads and team. It's, it's a very positive approach here, and collaboration is the key. A component of our annual budget process is the five-year capital plan. And Wendy and her team not only are doing a great job helping pull together the budget, but the five-year capital plan. Wendy and her team really take the lead coordinating that with all the department heads. On your desk is an updated sheet that's a little easier to read than the one that was in your emailed agenda packet, and if I could briefly call your attention to that. The Finance Committee and Executive Committees have unanimously supported the five-year capital plan, so it's here this evening for your consideration. It's within the budget parameters that you, that we, predominantly the Finance Committee, have established to borrow no more than two and a half million a year or five million over a two-year period. It's a self-imposed bonding limitation that's helped us keep our borrowing in line and we've we've been successful in working within those parameters unless there's been a, an, a special exception like the transportation facility but what I wanted to draw your attention to is not only has it been well vetted but there are two uh, amendments that are anticipated this evening and they've both been highlighted in Packer Gold by Wendy the aging and disability resource remodel it was, it, the total project is for 124500 uh, The property committee has been very supportive of wanting to see this happen sooner rather than later so Veterans Service Office can consolidate in the Aging and Disability Resource Center in the vacated FSA space that's going to happen later this fall. So Veterans Services will be moving to the Aging and Disability Resource Center. We're going to do some remodeling, and for those of you who haven't been in there for a while, it's due, it looks tired, it's a dated area. Uh, where, the, where some of the staff are, it was, it was upgraded, but a good part of the building really needs a little attention. So the total project is for 124,500, but the amendment anticipated this evening and supported by the executive committee is to reduce that to 74,500 because we have the other resources through building services, through the operating budget from 2017 and 2018 and supported by the property committee. They've already taken action. So that's amendment number one, and there is note of that in your agenda. Amendment number two is not in your agenda for that health care centers committee just came up with this last week. Kayla's always looking to help make good things happen at Rocky Knoll. And just last week, the health care centers committee discussed the resident alarms on the doors. And this is a safety enhancement, and one that we had built into the five-year capital plan for 2020. It was built in to improve the alarm system on the doors because some of our residents have dementia, they wander, and for their own personal safety, obviously we want to make sure they stay in the facility that they don't wander outside and potentially get hurt. 
So there's an area of our system that is failing and they were going to do a $30,000 temporary fix on the old system rather than do that. The amendment that I believe Supervisor Charlie Conrardi is going to make this evening is to move that forward to 2019 so we can do it right the first time and really save $30,000 that otherwise would go into a temporary fix. It has no bearing on the overall five-year capital plan. It's still within the five million self-imposed limitations. So those are the two amendments anticipated this evening. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. Okay, consideration of committee reports, executive committee, resolution number 13. Regarding 2019 five-year capital plan, recommendation to adopt as amended. Right, so the for first motion I'm looking for is a motion to uh, pass the five-year capital plan as amended by the executive committee. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to adopt as am recommended. Thank, thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Wegeman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll support that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. Supervisor Conrady. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wish to make a motion to move the res Rocky Knoll Resident Alert and Security System Project from the 2020 project to the 2019 project. In Thank you, Supervisor Conrady. Supervisor Bemis. And I will support that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. So now we're voting on the amendment, unless there's any questions first. We're voting on Supervisor Conrady's amendment to move that up. Okay. Cheryl needs to have a little minute or two to type that in. Lucky I'm not doing the typing. We'd be here for an hour. Okay, is there any discussion on Supervisor Conrady's amendment? Seeing no lights, Cheryl, if you can put us in voting mode. We'll now be voting on Supervisor Conrady's amendment. The motion is approved unanimously. Okay, that was on Supervisor Conrad's amendment, obviously. And now we'll be voting on the main motion of approving the five-year capital plan. Is there any discussion on that? Okay, Supervisor, actually, Supervisor Wegman first. Did you have a question? Supervisor Epping, did you have a question? Thank you, Chairman Wagner. Uh, my question on, on voting for the five-year capital plan, these are just plans. If you vote on this and it's not included in, the say, the 2019 budget for the appropriate uh, department, is it still going to go through? I mean, I mean, if you have a, if there's a project that you don't necessarily agree with and you don't want to see it go through, you know, regardless of whether or not it does, and you vote to approve the capital plan, or the five-year capital plan, does that mean you got to follow through with that on the budget in, in the future years that it's included and in, if it goes down a number Is of your years? question if it's out there a few years, like something 2021 or 2022? Say, say, say you got a project that's going to extend two or three years and it's in the five-year capital plan and you don't agree with it, if you vote to adopt the budget, or the, the capital plan, does that mean you're voting for the project or not? Okay, we'll I have Adam. I thought that always was part of the... the Got your question. We're good. The, Adam will answer it. Okay. okay. Good question, Mr. Epping. So five-year plan, so it is a plan. This is not the annual budget, so the dollars have not been authorized yet. But the key would be 2019 and 2020. 
uh, Supervisor Gehring and I met with the finance director actually this afternoon to revisit this and walk through it. And we'd be looking to bond in January of 2020, December, January of 2020, Wendy, thereabouts. I mean, it hasn't been finalized. That, that'll be discussed with the Finance Committee. So until we bond for some projects, that may not be proceeding. But for 2019, those projects, that's going to be part of our annual budget process. And the safest way to look at it is right now by supporting this plan, you are supporting 2019 and 2020 because those are going to be bonded dollars for two years. We're going to be moving forward with those unless there's some objection or something happens before we bond. And then when you look at 21, 22, 23, those will be revisited annually as we revisit the five-year capital plan. Okay, Supervisor Epping. Make sure I'm clear and clear in what I'm, I'm doing here. If I don't like the project, I gotta vote against the whole capital plan just based on one project, right? You could do that or make an amendment. Go ahead, Adam. As the chairman said, you can make an amendment just as what was done now to refine the plan. You could make an amendment to refine any aspect of the plan. Now's the opportunity to make changes if the board's so inclined. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to make an amendment to this in that I believe, and first of all, I'll make the amendment that the Customs Facility and Welcome Center for a total of $1,590,000 be taken out of this five year capital plan. And let me give you the, my reasoning why. As you know, I am a pilot. And I have visited 46 of the 186, 46 of the 186 public airports in Wisconsin. I have visited airports all over the world. I am a flight instructor. As you know, I'm well immersed with flying. And quite frankly, I, I don't think this facility is needed. I think the only one that really would have a good use for this facility would be the Kohler Company. Several airports in Wisconsin that I have visited, Eau Claire being one, uh, have built terminals and that are largely standing empty, unfortunate but true. You gotta remember too, if we build this thing, now we gotta maintain it and staff it. That's a lot of money. Uh, I and two partners ran the new Holstein Airport for a year and a half. And I went to several seminars on airport management and I got somewhat of an idea. I'm not a complete expert, but I got somewhat of an idea uh, what kind of an airport needs what kind of a facility. Uh, like I said, I've been a plane owner and pilot for 35 years. Uh, I was at the rollout at finance of the plants, and they look really good, okay? But I think there's a couple of glitches in them. For example, I think their projections on, on fuel sales, where the county makes a lot of its money, are way too high, way too high. Uh, I think we have a better place to put our money. Budgets are tight. We are up 2% this year. I think this would not be a necessity, but a luxury. We are stewards of the taxpayers' dollars, federal, state, and local. Yeah, I've heard the argument most of it's federal and state, but that doesn't matter. It still comes out of our pockets. So I'm going to ask you to consider removing this because I, I think we're rushing into this thing and I frank, frankly don't think we need it for one or two times a year. That is my honest opinion. And I'm not grinding an ax. I'm not mad at any company or anybody else. I've done a lot of research on this and uh, this is what I really believe. Thank you. Okay. There's a is there a second to that, Supervisor OJ? Um, no, actually, I had a question. I'll need a, I kind of need a second before we go any further. Is there a second um, to that motion? I'll second for the sake of being able okay. to talk then. It's been seconded. You want to speak now? Yeah. I, I, I admittedly know very little about airports. I try to avoid them. I like to drive every place. Um, but I see it says customs facility. I assume, are, are we required because of uh, international status? So it seems to me we 
have now are we required to have a customs area? That would be my first question. And secondly, I notice that this is scheduled for 2019. How much does that have to do with the probable influx of money we're going to have in 2020 with a very major golf tournament? Okay, a couple questions there. Adam, you wanna? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, we're not required to have a customs facility, though those that utilize it now would have to go up to Green Bay or down to Racine or to uh, Appleton. I believe they have a customs facility. So from a standpoint of the Kohler Company, since Supervisor Hoffman mentioned the Kohler Company, yes, they support the establishment of the customs facility, and they have also offered to pay for the, to staff it. Uh, the state is predominantly offered to pay for it. So when our largest employer is looking for an enhancement to the airport, I can assure you uh, we listen. Charles Sweet and Greg have also been intimately involved with this, and they're not the only company that has an interest in seeing a customs facility. Though you're correct, they would be the predominant user, but there are other companies as well. And then finally, as we become more of a tourist destination and people come around the world to come to activities like the Ryder Cup, a customs facility is good. In fact, it's good for fuel sales because we'd rather have fuel sales happening here rather than at other airports that off offer customs facility. So, no, it's not required, but yes, there is strong support from it from at least one major employer. Uh, as for timing, um, we are involved in discussions right now with both the state and federal representatives to see if we can get this built as soon as possible, hoping that it will be available when the Ryder Cup occurs. So there is a lot of momentum behind it. And finally, I don't think we're rushing anything because this was in the last five-year capital plan. As you can see, there's a donation project status. Is it new? Is it a continuation? Was it previously included? This was included previously. So this is not the first time we're talking about a customs facility and a welcome center. As to the welcome center, we're currently in discussions with representatives of the Heritage Board about whether or not their facility could ultimately become a welcome center or not. We don't know how that's going to end up, but what we have been able to tell them thus far in negotiations is that the county board has supported this previously as part of the five-year capital plan. And this year, the Transportation Committee, Finance Committee, and Executive Committee continued to, to support including this in the five-year plan. So that's been a basis of us entering into discussions with them. So with all due respect, though I certainly appreciate there's differences of opinion on this, from a staff perspective, we'd like to see it continue to be supported so we can continue to have these discussions with the state as well as the private sector to see what we can do to further enhance our airport. Okay, thank you, Adam. Uh, Supervisor Epping. Thank you, Chairman Wigner. Uh, I was gonna second that mo motion, but I do have a question. Is there a projected amount of uh, people that are going to be using the customs facility if we, if we have it? Do we have any idea how much it's gonna be used versus asking them to go to another place for their customs work and then coming here? I don't know if we have any number on that, Adam. Do we have any number? I'm looking I mean, at I mean if transportation it's going to be director. one per, if it's going to be one person that checks into the customs. Yeah. No, uh, Greg Charles. Uh, Just historically, when I started here, Chuck Mayer was the airport manager and the county board and the state, we've put, I think, 25, 30 million dollars of enhancements in our airport runways, infrastructure over the last two decades. We have a jewel of an airport and it supports our business community. And as we can continue to grow and as our economy continues to improve, when we hear from major employers, 
that they like to see further enhancements, such as a customs facility, and they're willing to pay to staff it, and we have the State Bureau of Aeronautics willing to pay most of the dollars necessary to build it, um, I, th I think it's a good addition for our community and for the airport. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Supervisor Hoffman, did you want to say something again? Yes, I did. Uh, there's a hitch in this argument, though. A lot of these people that are coming into Sheboygan will have already been through customs at the larger airports, be they Milwaukee, Chicago, New York, wherever the point of entry is. So they don't have to go through customs in Sheboygan if they're coming from overseas or Mexico or Canada. So there's a, a fallacious argument there. And, uh, you know, I've been squawking about this, as you probably know. This isn't the first time I've raised this issue. I raised it last year and was told more or less to wait to this year and, and see what's going on. And I've, I've been squawking against this. So uh, I was one of the lone voices a while back that advised some people on, at Lakeland College, don't get involved in a flight school. It is a tricky thing to, to make money on. You want to make money on a flight school? Start with $2 million. Wait a year, you'll be down to a million. Wait another year, you'll be broke. And Lakeland now, as you know, is pulling out of the flight school business. So, you know, I don't think we've researched this enough either, this airport business. I really don't. I, uh, so that's, that's my opinion, and that's why I'm making this motion. Okay, thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Thank Sup you. You're welcome. Supervisor Nelson. Well, I uh, really don't know about the amount of use being done right now at the airport, but uh, I did listen to uh, Mr. Sweet's presentation quite carefully, and what impressed me most about that, uh, uh, that presentation was the fact that right now we're losing uh, potential revenue because planes, a lot of people don't come, want to go to the big airport, so they fly into Racine, for instance and then gas up when they uh, go through customs at Racine and then come up here. And uh, we're, talking, uh, we're not talking about, you know, small planes. We're talking about the citations and the layers and all that stuff. And uh, so it, from what I understood from Mr. Sweet's uh, discussions was starting from the get-go, we, we'll, we'll, we'll see an increase in, uh, in revenues because of the fact that uh, these private planes don't want to land in New York or uh, Chicago. They want to land at a smaller airport with uh, lower, uh, lower landing fees, that sort of thing. And then they gas up there. And, that's, and the hope is that we capture that revenue than, than the other airports of our size are slightly small, uh, larger. Thank you, Supervisor Nelson. Okay. Supervisor Hoffman, your third time. You're on. Uh, Henry, I appreciate your, appreciate your argument, though, but the really big planes that haul a lot of people and come into the big airports can't land on a 6,000-foot runway here at Sheboygan. So they will go through customs at New York, you know, or wherever they're coming in. So I don't really see a big need. I think the projections are, are not there to support this, and that, that's my professional opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Supervisor Epping. Thank you again. I, I guess I, I'm wondering, as in any project, you, you, build, you build a big project, you have your, your, your basic cost, but then it's always your operating um, fees and all costs that, that seem to, to really hit the pocketbook the worst. And, and if I heard Adam speak correct, we, we're going to be reimbursed for the Initial cost of it plus reimbursed for for operating fees and how long is that going to last? And am I correct in my in what I'm assuming I heard? Go ahead, Adam. All is in discussion, and that is what we've been told by a representative of the Kohler Company that they have an interest in seeing customs facility. I think we have it in writing, do we not, Greg? I thought that's so as well, and that they uh, are willing to cover the staff costs associated with it. So that, that gave us a lot of momentum to proceed with, seeing if we can add this asset to the airport. Thank you. Supervisor OJ. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Um, I, I guess from my point of view, at first I want to say I'm, I'm not going to vote for this amendment. I just want to make that clear because I was the one who seconded it. <laughs> um, but we're in a state right now where we have more job openings than we have people to fill them. And we have a very large employer who wants this, who probably from their point of view needs this. It's foolish to do anything that gives the employer the impression or, or an excuse to move any jobs anyplace else. Uh, the amount of money we get from coal or company through donations, through taxes, through the income taxes of the employees that go into this state, the property taxes because of the people who work there and own homes. Um, this isn't like a, a company saying, we're gonna move if you don't do this for us. But the reality in this, this economy is they do go places where they can get what they need. So that's all I really need to say about that. And yes, I do work at Kohler, and no, nobody has said anything to me about this. Thank you, Supervisor OJ. Well, any other questions or comments on Supervisor Hoffman's amendment, which we'll be voting on in a minute? Okay, seeing no lights. Cheryl, can you put us in voting? You may now vote. Correct. Right up there. It's right on the top. We're voting on the amendment. Motion does not carry. Six ayes, 17 nays. Two abstain. I'm sorry, two absent. <clears throat> well, I'm embarrassed. I met the vote no. <laughs> So I'm just going to explain that to you, that I voted aye, but it is what it is. First time I've ever done that, it is what it is, so. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, boy. You know this new technology up here? I'm pushing, no, never mind. That's my excuse anyways. All right, now we're back to the original motion to approve the five-year capital plan. Is that correct? Okay, is there any discussion on the full five-year capital plan? Supervisor Otten. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the project of 3007, what is that? Third from the bottom that's listed. Does Wendy have it? SANS stands for Storage Area Network. It's IT, computer equipment, and storage capability. Thank you, Supervisor Adam. Adam and thank you, Supervisor. Thank you, Adam. Any other questions? Okay, Cheryl, seeing no more lights, please put it. Excuse me. Okay, now this is to adopt resolution number 13, the five-year capital plan as amendment with those two amendments. Please push aye if you're in favor and nay if you're opposed. And I'll try and remember to do that. Motion is approved, 22 aye, one nay. Thank you. Consideration of committee reports, finance committee, resolution number 14. All right, regarding authorizing planning and conservation department to apply for fiscal year 2018 tree planning grant, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of resolution number 14. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. Is there any questions or discussion on the motion? Hold on, Jim. Okay. I pressed mine to uh, um, make a motion, but it never showed, so. Okay, I, I, I didn't see yours at all, no. I, I didn't see it either, that's Try why. it again, just try it again. Okay, push your light on, see if it. 
You're in good company tonight. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, we have a motion, and I'm not ignoring anybody. I just try to do the right thing up here, <laughs> just so you know. Okay, we have a motion there on the tree planting. Seeing no more lights for discussion, please vote aye or nay. Thank you, Cheryl. That was quick. <laughs> Motions approved unanimously. Okay, thank you. I'll turn the gavel over to the vice chair. Okay, resolutions introduced. Resolution number 15 from the Finance Committee regarding approving standard intergovernmental agreement for 2019 sales tax revenue sharing. Resolution number 15 will go to the Executive Committee. Resolution number 16 from the Transportation Committee. Regarding authorizing county aid for bridge and culvert construction in Mosul, Plymouth, and Sherman. Resolution number 16 will go to the Finance Committee. There are no ordinances introduced. Next item is adjournment. Supervisor Bemis. I move we adjourn. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Very good. Cheryl. We are adjourned. adjourned.